Good morning. It's 8.50, January the 24th, 2016. And the Lord has kept us another week and brought us together again that we may come together and have the Lord be with us that we can read His Word and be encouraged about what He teaches us. And we're going to continue on in our marriage series we're on wives right now and just to remind us of marriage is honorable it's an honorable thing God loves marriage he instituted marriage and it's a good thing a wife she's a good thing she, she, a wife is a valuable gift from the Lord he himself says that he who finds a good wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. So if, you, if you're married and you have a good wife, that's God's grace and favor being shown to you. And it, she's good. A wife is not a wicked, evil thing. I mean, they can be, <laughs> but that's there because we have examples of what you would we would call bad wives that a, 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 a good wife don't want to be. And we looked at a couple of those areas. Or we didn't, I don't think we looked at the scripture in particular. We just talked about the different scriptures that speak about a, a, a bad wife and what she does. She tears her house down. We, and, she, and she doesn't build her house up. She stays away from home. Or she don't like being at home. She stays away from her home. She doesn't care for her husband and her children in a way that God wants her to. She probably works outside the home and she don't care much about the home. She don't care for the home. Like a wife, a biblical wife, should. She's more interested in what, you know, her own goals and her own pleasures and her own, her own, her own. What she can get for herself and things like that. Uh, up to this point, we haven't seen that type type of wife uh, uh, considered good. Up to this point, we have not seen uh, anything other than the wife being good, the wife being uh, a helpmate for her husband, a wife being bearing children, and being a gift and a valuable a valuable person she's she's a she's a valuable person god has given her value and she's exalted and husbands should exalt their wives as much as they can because god has exalted and given wife a special place with a husband and in the home she's the wife is lots of things, lots of things. A, a man, a, or a, a husband, or a man, he may he may do two or three things. But when we when we see how how, how talented and how resourceful and what God has given to a wife, she's she's just invaluable. Actually, a good wife is invaluable to a husband, to a family, to society. She really brings about goodness. A good wife it brings about goodness in her husband, in her children, and those around her. She is always doing good. And she makes that, she exudes that goodness uh, in, in what she does. Not in the way she looks. What she does exudes goodness, exudes Exudes, is that right? Yeah, exudes, exudes. You know, it comes out, it shows her uh, her inward goodness that God has put there as a as a loving wife, and mother, as a as a as a really decent, good person. That wife is, and she has multiple talents. And I can say that about. Uh, my wife in here, she has multiple talents. She does several things well. 
And, you know, she's a good wife. And I don't want, I, I want her to be exalted as a wife because God wants her to be exalted. God loves her. And remember also that a wife is a child of God. She's a, a child of God as well. God values her for that and for her being a wife. And, you know, I'm, I want to continue, just continue to exalt the wife because she is to be exalted. And she is a multi-talented person in many ways. And as we get in to our scripture reading today, we'll see uh, more directly how and what abilities that God has given a wife and what she can do and what, you know, what she can do if she wants to, if she sets her mind to it, to do it. And I think that's another key. It is the key that as a wife, and I say as a husband too, there has to be you as an individual. Your faith in God has to be so that you want to be a good wife. You want to be a good husband. You want that. And then that leads you to the Word of God because that's how you find out what God thinks a, a good husband or a good wife is. It's in His Word. Amen. And, you know, we've seen that up to this point. Now, of course, you know, we haven't got to the, to the other portion of Scripture. Uh, like I said, we started in the beginning and to see what a wife is. And that's where we're, we're in Proverbs now. And probably... If we get through this Proverbs today, which I may kind of go through it quickly, I'm not sure. I may break it into two different parts, or maybe even three, because we could go on and on if we did a really comprehensive word study and everything about what it, what is in these scriptures that we're getting ready to look at. I've dug in some, but not as deep as I could go with it. So we're going to be in Proverbs 31. Ooh. <laughs> That's like going to Galatians and seeing the the uh, the works of the flesh and going to other portions of scripture and seeing where God says you got to do this, you got to do that, you got to do this. Woo, I can't do none of that, Lord. He knows that. And he is he he enables you to do that. But a, a good wife, like I said, her first, her first, uh, her the good wife's first loyalty is to God, and the husbands should nurture that in every way that he possibly can, and the wife should nurture that as much as she can too. This relationship with God is all important because everything that we read in Scripture concerning a wife, a marriage, a husband is not possible without God. It's just not. And you wouldn't want it to be possible if you didn't love God. You would go the other way like the world goes or like people who don't want to obey the word of God as it is written. They, they want to pervert it and lean it towards their ways, not God's ways. So we're going to look at Proverbs 31. <laughs> uh, every Christian woman knows Proverbs 31. She's been beat over the head probably with it so much, so much, so much. So and that's not I don't want to do that. I'm not wanting to beat anybody over the head. I just want to, like we said, I want to go through the scripture and give what the scripture says about a wife. So this is the, what we shall call the quintessential description of a, a good virtuous wife. Are you going to accomplish and be all of this? Probably not. Because even when we when we read the scripture and God teaches us about what He expects 
human beings to be, we're not that. But that's our goal. That's our desire. And the Lord enables us and sanctifies us daily as we walk in the Spirit with Him. We become better, we become more conformed, we become more transformed. We, our, our minds are renewed our, and all of that. Even while our bodies are dying, we're becoming brand new every day. So, we're going to look into this. Uh, of course, it's been used a few times by, by the uh, opposition party, I call them, who oppose uh, this kind of wife and use this as a means to be the, a, a, a different kind of wife in, in some instances. So, it's Proverbs 31. It says, The words of King Lemuel, the utterance or the prophecy or the vision, can be translated either way, or the word which his mother taught him. Now, first of all, let's get this out of the way. Who was King Lemuel? Uh, nobody really knows who King Lemuel is. He's only mentioned here in Proverbs 31. There's several different things, people, several different ideas. The, the name means uh, for God, to God, towards God, belonging to God. Uh, it's Lem and then El, belonging to God. Some say he was a king of Masa. Uh, there's others who's, who say that this was a name for Solomon. Another name for Solomon. Basically, he's a, he's a mystery. He may not even be a person. He may be a, a, a uh, just a, a, a singing, like this is the word of God, you know, and things like that. As I was studying it, the thought hit me since his mother is would be Bathsheba if it's Solomon. Well, if it's if this is if the woman is Bathsheba, which most say she is, but I don't know why they say that. But anyway, he could be a mother, uh, a son of Uzziah, you know, her first husband. Well, you know, if, if, since everybody's speculating. Anyway, King Lemuel, he's a mystery. He's a mystery man, well, maybe not even a man. Uh, they try to tie him to different other names in the scripture, but it doesn't seem to work. So right now we're gonna, we're gonna say King Lem, Lemuel is somebody, you know? Uh, he may have been at Arabic, this may be an Arabic poem. Uh, it it's it may be an a, 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 it's it, it could be an acrostic acrostic poem a Hebrew poem right? like Psalms nine one nineteen was you know each portion is begins with the Hebrew alphabet one of the letters of the Hebrew alphabet there's there's different ideas about it but I think also that since this is the word of God and God does watch over his word and all scripture is given by inspiration of God and it's possible for teaching, for correction, for improving, for training in our righteousness and the things that were written beforehand were written for our learning so that we through comfort of scripture may have hope uh, we need to take these, these words just as we would take any that they are guided by the Holy Spirit. It was written down by inspiration of the Holy Spirit. It was compiled and put together by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. So it is good for us to be able to use for teaching, for doctrine, for improving, for correction, and for training in our righteousness. And of course, righteousness is just being good before God. And we have no righteousness of our own so anything that we can draw from Scripture and and attach it to ourselves and attempt it, that's God's righteousness. And that's what, that is what we want. So just to get that out of the way, King Lemuel, nobody knows who he is. 
you know, once again, if it is Solomon, then his mother here would have to be Bathsheba. But, you know, we're just going to say this is the Word of God from Him. Uh, just like other portions of Scripture that are mysterious, they are inspired by God. And they're here for us for learning. So we're going to take it as it is. And, of course, we're going to we're going to skip all this uh, up to verse 10 because that's what our focus is on wives. Unless you want me to read all that. Well, you want to read the rest of that. It's some words of wisdom that is given to this individual, this King Lemuel from his mother. So we're just going King Lemuel, Lemuel and his mother. This is the advice he, his mother gives to him, whoever he is and whoever she is. But for us, we're, we're going to allow this to be an instruction to us from our God and Father. And how, you know, how we should understand it. We pray that God will give us ears to understand as we read. Mm -hmm. um, so, let's begin with verse 10. Who can find a virtuous wife? Some, some, I think some translations is woman, but it's wife. It could be translated, it's woman. Woman is always wife. Wife is usually always woman. Because you can't be a wife unless you're a woman, number one. <laughs> and you can't, be, well, anyway, you can't be a wife. But a virtuous woman, this, this, this epitomizes a woman, a wife. Just the first verse, because she, that she's this, this, this. Who can find a woman like this? She's excellent in everything. That's what virtuous. She's virtuous. She, you know, she has no faults. I mean, she does everything well. She's strong. She's gone. She's young. She's young. She's everything. You know. Uh, I don't know how you find one, but boy, I did. For me, she is, the, she is the most excellent wife for me. And she's proven it over and over, many times over. So she's, you know, who can find an excellent woman or a virtuous woman? Who can? I mean, to go look for one, you know, how would you find one? You know, because how would you? You have your idea of what you think it would be, but you know, would that be right? How would you find a virtuous wife? How would you? For her worth is far above rubies. Could you buy her? Could you buy one? A virtuous woman? This wife? Could you buy one? You know? Then you don't have a wife. You have a slave. And that's not a virtuous wife. That's not an excellent wife. That's a servant. But we're going to follow, go down this list and just comment somewhat on on each one. First, you know, she is she is a she is this 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 woman, you know, she's this woman who this mother is giving her son advice on how he ought to when he gets married. Don't just get married, you know. Find you a virtuous. This is the kind of wife that you should have and that God wants you to have. And this is what God considers an excellent, virtuous wife. This is the kind of, uh, it says, her worth is far above rubies. Now then once again, God places a wife, she's, a, she's, a more, she's valuable once again. We need to keep that in mind because oftentimes a wife isn't held in value. A wife, what a wife does, she's not valued. She's very rarely valued by society unless she's crying because she had to leave her kids. But normally, she's not valued. If she stays home and comforts her crying children, she stays home and does that. Uh, but in general, a wife isn't considered that valuable. I mean, a lot of times, even with the husband, 
she's just who he married, you know, he's stuck with her now, you know, whatever, whatever, we're together, hey, hey, you know, she does her thing, I do mine, let's go and have life. But God makes it different. A wife is, she's more valuable than rubies or any other thing we can add. As we go on, we'll see that. She's valuable. God places a wife high of value. She's very valuable to God and to you and to her family. And what she does is valuable, what she does. Very valuable. And it, uh, here's the first part. The heart of her husband safely trusts her. Her husband, you know, he sees her value. This, and, and, and he trusts her. He, 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 he wholly gives himself to her. He holds nothing back. There's, there's no secret place that he keeps back from her. He learned he 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 learns that she's a a woman who cares for him, and he trusts her in every way. He he can give her everything. Uh, in, in just take one example, you know Joseph, when he was in the Potiphar's house, Potiphar trusted him, and gave him control over everything, except his wife, you know, but a husband. You know, he, 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 he'll put everything in her hands. He don't, he don't have to worry about nothing with her. He trusts her because she's proven herself to be trustworthy. Uh, said the heart of her husband safely. I like that safely. He's, he, he, he's safely. There's this, there's this environment that the wife has, has, has created within the home area between the husband that he can fully trust her. He's safe, he's safe with her. There's this safety that they have between each other. This, you know, we're together and we're safe together. You don't have to worry about you and me, you know, being at each other. We're, we're safe together. And he, he trusts her. So he will have no lack of gain. Now that's just the funny thing. You know, when I first read it, I said, what's that mean? So, Anyway, it's, uh, you know, he, he has what he needs with her. He don't have to go out looking for something else. You know, everything that he invests in her prospers and comes back to him a thousand times more. He has, he lacks nothing. If, if he invests his love, he gets more love. He invests his time, he gets time. He invests whatever, his life, he gets more life. There's, there, there's this gain that you, that you receive. Uh, from your wife because that's the kind of woman she is she's she's uh, excellent she does him good and not evil you know a wife would do you good husbands not evil I know oftentimes we hear people talk about their wives like they're doing them so wrong Oh, she's done me so wrong. She won't let me go eat breakfast with my buddies. Or she won't let me go hunting. Or she won't let me watch football all day long. Or she won't let me do this and won't let me do that. She's so mean to me. Uh, well, you know, if what a, what, you know, if, if that's, that's something that, uh, you as a husband need to address because evidently if that's what you want there's something you need to turn your and repent and turn your attention to the wife who you married because she is of more value than anything that you think you want and we need to get that through our heads that a wife is a valuable thing. She's not a problem. She's not an evil thing. She does us good all the days of our life and not evil. Uh, and she seeks wool and flax and willingly works with her hands. She willingly works. It's what she does. She enjoys it. Now, work is not always enjoyable, and it can be burdensome because 
you have different uh, things about work that can that can bring you down. And sometimes work is pleasurable, and sometimes it's not. But she willingly does this. She she's willing to put forth what it takes to make a home a home, to make it a pleasant place, to make her husband, uh, to to her children. Uh, she's she's willingly works willingly she's ready she's ready she enjoys it it, it gives her joy maybe not the, the always you know she's not singing and dancing and going on about it but it's something that she really sets her mind to it she does it it's 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 her goal she has her goal in mind to 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 create this atmosphere of a home and, and a place of, of safety and warmth and love, and she willingly works. And she she'll she'll get whatever she needs. Here they call her wool and flax. That's they, they make thread and make you know make clothing you know, with uh, with these different materials. And she she would willingly do that. But remember, I mean, you know. Uh, we don't have to make clothes today, but we can go out and buy clothes. But if you want to, if you want to make clothes, wives, I mean, go right ahead and do it. You, it's, you're able to do that. God gives you that ability. And this is—I just want to press this again. I mean, I doubt very seriously if any wife that I know of, or any woman I know of, you know, has all these qualities in herself. But she don't. But. She, each wife has her own particular abilities and talents that is for her and her home and her family and her husband. And God enables her to do for her home what he wants her to do to make that home a godly home. And, and don't don't think don't lessen the 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 don't lessen the the uh, role of the wife in making a godly home yeah a husband is the spiritual head of the home but a wife can guide guides and and teaches and makes a godly home she i mean when i when i've been studying this i just realized so much how how a wife is so crowned and so, so valued by God. She, she just, he, he thinks a wife is an incredible, incredible being. He loves wives. God does. I mean, he, he, he compares his church to a wife. I mean, really. You know, I mean, that's amazing. Adorned, he says, she's adorned, my bride, adorned. You know, he, with jewels and just beautiful. God thinks wives are beautiful. And we husbands ought to look at our wives the same way God does. As a, a beautiful and amazing and, 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 and valuable. Because God does. And he gives her all these different abilities that she can do for the home. For her husband, for her children. And it, it, she does it willingly. She loves it. It's something that she likes. It gives her satisfaction, you know. She don't feel like she's got to go somewhere else and get her jollies or her jewelries or her whatever. She gets it right there, you know. Her satisfaction comes from her work. And it is work. It's not leisure. Being a wife is not leisure. It is work. But it has great rewards, more greater rewards than any job could ever give you. Any job could ever give you. No, you could receive no rewards like this going anywhere, no matter where you go, outside the home to work. Amen. Okay, she is like the merchant ships. She brings her food from afar. And this is one of the portion of scripture that they use. Well, see there, she is, she's, she's out there working. She's got this business that she's kind of, she's got a business. She's a businesswoman, you know, and all this. 
Well, uh, she it says she's like the merchant ship, and uh, you know, merchant ship that could be merchant sailors, you know, men of ships. That means that that what she does when she does her work, she brings it to her house. Uh, in that sense, you know, it's it's there. There is nothing that she wouldn't do to bring whatever is needed into the home. You know, she's not, I mean, sure she is, she is a, she's a shrewd businesswoman. And that's, that's, a, she is shrewd. She's shrewd, and you'll see as we go. And, and, and she's not slothful. She's very ingenious, very uh, entrepreneur, yeah. And she's doing it for the home. And she's doing it. She, you know, it's, uh, it says she also rises while it is yet night. Well, she rises in the dark. Her days are long. And her days are not filled with slothfulness. She's always busy about taking care of her home and her family. I mean, this, as, as we go through there, I mean, my gosh. I mean, if, if, if one woman did all this all the time, whew, you know, nobody would want to be around her. But she is, this is what God, he, this is what he can do for you in, in the state that you're in. He can, he can lift you up. He can bring all this out of you and you can do all this. This is not impossible for any, any wife to do. It, it, it'll be done in different ways you know, in different degrees, but it's all possible. Just like everything God commands of us and asks of us and admonishes us, it's, it's not impossible because it's He who gives you the ability. The same way here. But, I mean, you know, she, she'll get what she can get. I mean, if, if, you know, if she has to go to here to get something and bring it to her own, that's what she does, you know. Uh, but that doesn't mean that, that she's out on the ship away from her home and her family, you know? She's not the sailor on the ship, and like, I guess that's how they look at it, you know? She's not, she don't have a business set up in town, you know, she goes there every day and leaves her home, you know? That's not what she's doing. That's not what the idea is. The idea is that she'll gather from whatever source she can gather and brings it to the home and where she's at, you know? Well, they bring it to her. Merchant ships usually come to you. You don't go to them. They come to you and bring what you need. I mean, you know, you can send them a letter and says, I need this, I need this. She didn't have to go. She didn't have to go with them, so on and so on. But, you know, she'll do what needs to be done. She rises early. She provides food for her household. And, I, I, you know, the, the, the word household is mentioned in here three or four times in this whole scripture. So that's what we're talking about. Household. And a household is a place where a family lives. A husband, wife, children, possibly in-laws, whoever. But the wife is this, the, the, the one who makes this home into something good. It's not just four walls. It's not just a place to sleep. It's not just where everybody gathers uh, to eat, whatever. You know, it's not one comes here and one goes there. It, the, this home, you're there together. Uh, and everybody is working towards making that a home. But the wife is, is, is the major player. She is the major player in the home. She... She is the ruler of the home, just how it is. And everybody should fall in line <laughs> with, with the wife because she's the wife, she's the mother. She, she is the one who cares for the home and keeps the home. And the husband should respect that and, and be, you know, and, and, and be the kind of husband that she needs to help make that home. Uh, now he's going to be away from the home all day. And when he comes into the home, 
He's coming into, yeah, his castle, but it's her domain. You know, that's that's where she is. That's that's who she is. She's a wife. She's a valuable. Why she's working at night. She gets up early. She's working for her home. She's not getting up early, putting on makeup for two hours, going someplace else and working for somebody else. Uh, bringing home little if she brings anything because most of it will go for for the new car, the insurance, more taxes, it go to child care. So the little that she does bring home, she's not going to give it to her home, she's going to give it to herself because she needs new clothes, she needs more makeup, she needs more of this and more of that. So most of the money is spent and gone and does no good whatsoever. It's just everybody now running around, there's no home life. And if there are children, because you don't want to have children anymore, because they, they get in your way, uh, the children are generally left by themselves. Someone else takes care of them. Uh, and, and <laughs> but anyway, she gets that, but she does, she's always working. She prepares food for a house. She gets up early to prepare food. And that's literal food, and that's food in a general sense. You know, it's dude, something that keeps the home alive, you know. And a wife does that. She keeps the home alive. She is the life of the home and the and the family. Wow. I mean, you just, you, like I said, the more I look at this, the more I see. And it's really changing me in a lot of ways. That uh, how 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 exalted and how much a wife is and does and what God thinks of a wife and what He allows her to do. I mean, you know, a husband. I'm just going to compare it to. Yeah, he's the head of the house. He has all that. He goes out and works. You know. I mean, he's pretty simple. You know. Three or four things, you know, whatever. He may have, he's got talents and stuff, but man, look what a woman can do. <laughs> I mean, there's no way a husband or a man is going to do all this. You know, he's just not. He's just not going to do it. We can't do it. He would fall out. The strength that God gives a woman and a wife is amazing. Just amazing. And she does all that. She cares for it. She rises up. She provides food for the household. And and ladies, that doesn't mean that you go and get a job and buy food. No. That doesn't what that means. That means that you prepare some food while you're at home. And you make it. And it, it, it's for your family. That's why you're up early. Because, uh, you know, you're not using microwaves. You're not using you know, instant stuff. You're actually preparing food. You may have to go out and get some eggs. And you may have to do this, do that. But you're preparing food. You have to get up early. In order, you have to get up early to be a good wife. I mean, you know, an egg, this kind of wife. You, it takes time to provide food for your family, for your household. Uh, you know. And a portion for her maid service. Now this one in particular, she's got some maids that helps her. You know. Well, that's good. It'd be nice to have a maid. So if you know, if you can afford a maid to help you, get one. But then you got to make sure you provide for them. That doesn't mean that they that they take up all your slack. I mean, because as you go on, you'll see. I mean, this this wife is busy, busy, busy. She's got some maid servants. She's busy, busy, busy. They must be cleaning her house for her. They must be keeping the house clean. Or, you know, doing some of the tasks that, you know, even even the best of, of, of women or, or even men can't get to. You got to have somebody helping you, no matter how good you are. Everybody's got to have help, no matter how good they are. So, and, but, you know, she doesn't neglect the people around her. And, you know, I guess if, if you wanted to, 
and I guess they probably do, I don't know, but they may use that as meaning that's her employees. So she's got to run into business. Well, I mean, it does say her household provides food for her household and a portion for her maid service. So it must be that they are working for her at home if they aren't, whatever. She's at home. Okay, she considers the field and buys it. And from the fruit of her hands, she plants a vineyard. Or, would it depend on what translation you're looking at, from her profit or her gain. Uh, what's the matter? You hot? Something? You okay? You seem a little fidgety. Huh? I just kind of want to be here. Oh, okay. But, uh, well, wow, she considers a field and buys it. And from the fruit of the ground, she plants a vineyard. That's nice. She, she's going to plant a garden, and she's going to plant a vineyard so she can have food. That's wonderful. You know? if, if your wife wants to do that, let her do it. Don't try to stop her. That's good. Because she's going to take that produce, and she's going to bring it to the home, and you're going to have wonderful food. So let her do it. Don't stop her. But don't send her out to, to uh, Jojo's farm and tell her to work, go work, bring me some money. That's not what this is saying. That, that she, she's smart. She looks at something, she says, hey, that looks good. I need to look at that. That's something I can bring. That's something I can do to help this household. She's got some money, and she buys this field. Well, however they, whether they use money or not, may bought her. I don't know, but she buys the field. She at first she considers it. She thinks about it. Her and her husband probably talk about it. You yeah, know, okay, go ahead. But you, because he trusts her. You know, go right ahead. I trust your wisdom. I trust your, you know, reasonableness. If you see something that that's good, go for it. So she does. She thinks about it. She she's not doing things where it's rationally. She's not just doing things. You know, she considers what she does. Uh, that's I I often tell my wife that's one thing I like about her. She always considers everything, and she always looks at all the different angles and uh, and she usually if you ask her why she's doing what she's doing, she can tell you step by step and I love that about her she considers things uh, and then she can take what she has what what profit she has from this field now she can increase now she can plant a vineyard now she can make wine or grapes or whatever you're going to do with it and then if you want to you can sell part of it you know that's nothing wrong with that. You know, if, if you can profit that way, profit that way. If you had that ability, do it. If you had the land to do it, do it. Says so she girds herself with strength and strengthens her arms. Wow. You know? <laughs> it takes it takes a lot of strength. Like I said, it's amazing to me. The strength that God gives women. Just in being a woman and doing what they do. A wife, I'll say. My wife, anyway. But she's girded herself with strength. She, you know, she's up early. She's, I got to do this. You know? And I got to do this. I'm doing this. You know, I'm, I'm enjoying this. This is for my family. I got to get this done. You know? If she's getting a little tired, she's going to pick herself up. You know, I got to do this. You know, I got my family. Got my maid service. Got all this got to be done. Got a field. Got a vineyard. You know, I gotta prepare food and uh, take strength. I gotta do it. She strengthens her arms. How did she's not out there at the gym, you know, strengthening her arms like, you know, the more modern wife, I would say. She's at the gym trying to strengthen herself. Why 
the home is deteriorating. You know, nobody at home has anything, and she's at the gym. You know, strengthening herself for what? Who knows? For herself. And that's you know, where well, that's what she'll reap. She'll reap from herself. Uh, but she's strengthening herself through the work that she does. She's working. Oh man, when I see my wife kneading bread, doing what she does, the different the task that she does around here, how she, you know, does what she does here, takes strength. And you're going to get strong while you do it. And you can see her arms and that they're, they're, you know, they're toned. She's toned in her arms. And that's because she works. And a wife works. You often hear women say, yeah, if I stayed at home, I'd be bored. Well, because you don't work. There's plenty of work to do at home. Sure is. Especially if you have children and a, and a husband. Or, you know, even if you just have a husband, there's plenty to do. Okay. Plenty to do. A home always needs care. And wives, remember that. Your home always needs care. Nobody's going to care for it like you will if you love your home. And children as well. Nobody's going to care for your children like you do. Uh, you're better off with them and they're better off with you at home, not in some other place. She girds herself with strength and strength in the arms. I mean, really, you girded yourself with strength, you know. That's the same, I think, the same thing where you talk about in the New Testament, where they girded themselves, you know, where they would raise up their robe and tie it around their waist. And, you know, if you, you know, we always talk about the core of the body. If the core of your body is strong, it strengthens your whole body. So that's what that means, it's girded, you know, you, eh, eh, you know, you're sucking it in, you're doing it, you're getting it done, and you're strong. She perceives that her merchandise is good. And then once again, she knows what is good. She knows it's good. And her lamp does not go out by night. So she's up early, she just goes to bed at night, working, working, working. It sounded like a dreary life, you know, but it's not. It's very rewarding. In the midst of all this, I think we may stop here. In the midst of all that, I mean, there's this, there's this great rewards that come from it. And don't think there's not a reward in, in work, especially work at home. I mean, only the only thing you, you receive if you go to work outside the home is you're going to receive some reward because you're going to, you may get a, a praise from your boss or you may get some you know some stuff from your co-workers how good you are how great you are how wonderful you are uh, you know but man what you're going to receive from being a wife at home taking care of your home like a virtuous woman excellent wife does the rewards are tremendous you're going to have a sense of value in yourself that you couldn't get from anybody else because it's from God. When you realize the value that God puts on a wife, you, I mean, you would run to be at home and forget all that other stuff and see just how shallow and fleeting that kind of value that you put on working outside the home. It's, 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 it's nothing it has no value except for the moment because it may make you feel better. It may, whatever it does for you. But when you realize the value that you actually truly have within your, within, it's not something from that's, that's, that's made. It's something that is a true value that God himself puts on a wife. She's a value. And it, it, it would give you the, the esteem and let's say the strength to be a wife. And it does take strength to be a wife. It's not an easy thing to be a, an excellent wife. Like we, It's not. Yeah. Shoot, anybody can get up because people do it every day. Anybody can get up before it's dark, spend a couple hours putting on makeup, 
getting yourself all dressed up, looking like you think you look fine, and you get in your whatever and you go wherever, that's easy. No, that's nothing. And you hang out where you are, doing whatever you do. People tell you how good you are or how bad you are. They tell you when to go to the bathroom, when to eat. They tell you when to pick up your kids, when you can't. They tell you whether you can go see your husband at lunch or whether you can't. <laughs> oh, that's really fun. But when you, when, and that's this value that God has. I don't mean to sound sarcastic, but that to me, I mean, it's, it seems so useless. It's just a round and round circle, you know. It leads nowhere. But this position that God has a wife in, that is exalting. That's that's something that is eternal. It really is. It's an eternal value that God places on a wife. Be a good wife. You can be a good wife. It's possible. God says it is. And he's given us some guidelines and things to pursue. And we'll continue that next time. We'll start in uh, 19, I guess. Verse 19. I hope this has been good for you. Whoever hears this, I hope it will build you up. And uh, Husbands, I hope it will bring some life into your love of your wife. And you'll see her in, more, in a more valuable light. And you wives who feel, you know, whatever, I hope that you will see these things and start seeing yourself as something valuable as God sees you. And I pray that that will be so in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. Any comments from you, my lovely? I don't think so. Good. All right. See you next time.